Welcome along to State of the Week. Delighted to have Shannon Courtney here making your professional debut in uh, a few weeks' time on the yes. big Copper Box show. Uh, just tell us a little bit about your journey so far to this point. Um, so I've been boxing now for four, four and a half years. Um, had a quite a good amateur career, won quite a few titles. I have quite a pro style though. Never really wanting to go to the Olympics because I only ever done a few weekends at GB and I've never really had that amateur style that they want that pedigree for the Olympics and I always had in my head that I wanted to turn pro and the game just got bigger and bigger for women and I thought, you know what, now is the right time. So this wasn't a dream from when you were very little, this no. was something that came to you later. came by chance. Yeah. I only went into a boxing gym to lose weight because I was 82 kilos and I was a heavy smoker, a heavy drinker, I was smoking 30 to 40 a day, drinking every day, living the wrong lifestyle. And then I just went to a boxing gym, so like as a boxer size. Like I even went out, made out I was going for a wee, and I actually went out for a cigarette halfway between. <laughs> and I was just so out of shape, I kept being sick. And the guy said to me, you've got a talent, but you're really unfit, and you're not leaving a very good lifestyle. And then I went to Finchley, and it just all changed. Everything happened. And how, just... how much have you enjoyed the, the change in your whole life? I love it. I'm a different person for it now because I'm happy. I wasn't happy back then and I, was, I would be loud because of it because I was so insecure in myself. I would try and comp overcompensate and I'd be loud. And now I'm content with my life. I'm happy. I feel very blessed and I'm just... I'm really excited to see where the journey goes now, really. So you're with Adam Booth, who's yeah. had so much success over the years. Yeah. You, you're with a good guy there. What's the ambition? Is it just to take it step by step? Or have you got a, a goal of becoming a world champion, even coming to it this way, the way you have? Uh, world champion. If, if I didn't want to become a world champion, I wouldn't enter the sport. I think if you're going to... If you enter the sport without wanting to be a world champion, why are you doing it? Do you know what I mean? I've got, I've got an ambition. So I'm not saying I'm going to be world champion in three years. Um, I haven't got that Olympic background, so I don't want to be rushed into the sport like some people want to be. I want to learn of every fight. I've got a lot to learn. I've got a lot to prove as well to not just people watching TV, but to Adam. And I think in due time, when I'm ready, he'll push me on for bigger titles. But at the minute, just learn every fight and see what happens. Has it been a tougher road not having that, that pedigree, not having maybe the, the pressure, I guess, of, uh, that comes with you know, going to the Olympics, but then you know, the likes of Nicola Adams, Katie Taylor that have come through, you know, the, the promotion's dream sort of yes. thing because they've got that, that background and that pedigree. Has it been harder or not for you? I think it's either or, really. It's been harder because I haven't got that almost that experience yeah. of going to the Olympics fighting and then really high pressure fights like Olympic finals where you probably learn an awful lot about yourself in them fights. But there's also pressure on them girls that when they turn pro, people are expecting a lot of them because sure. they've got gold medals. But then there's also pressure on me because because I haven't got that Olympic background, people are thinking, well, she's, she's with Matchroom, so who is this girl? Well, she must be something if they're going to be looking at her, wanting her to fight on their, on their TV, yet she hasn't got an Olympic gold medal. So there's always people are going to expect a lot of me as well. So who are you? I mean, you, you say you've got a, a good pro style. You've had some yeah. success, Southern Area champion, Harringay yeah. Cup. So th there is quality. It's not maybe not the Olympic level, but what are you going to bring into the professional ring that's going to excite us? I'm very aggressive for a woman the way I fight. Um, you find with some women, it's get in and get out. I will happily stand there and trade every minute of every fight. I, I enjoy trading. Don't get me wrong, Adams taught me that <laughs> it's not fun to get hit, Shannon, so move your head a little bit more because I don't. I used to not mind getting punched in the head to land two or three more. So I've now I've kept that aggressiveness, but I've got the slick movement and the fast twitch movement to go with it. But no, I think people will, will, will like my style, especially for a woman. I'm exciting to watch. Well, let's talk about women's boxing because there's been a, a massive ascent in it, hasn't it? It's fantastic. Katie Taylor sort yeah. of leading the way. Clarissa Shields, of course, <laughs> over in America. Big fights being talked about. Big fights being made. Our own yep. Katie back in, in Philly going for another unification yep. on the way to Undisputed as, as, as a lightweight. Um, it's obviously changed dramatically yep. uh, for the good and, 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 and you're now part of that. That yep. must be really enticing and exciting. Now is the perfect time for a woman to become a professional boxer because people do talk about Katie Taylor in the same conversations they do when they talk about other world champions. So it's lovely, like when you see Katie Taylor, whenever she fights, whether it's at Philadelphia or Boston or even Cardiff, she steals a show every time and she really does. So people respect her, not just because she's a woman, but because she's a good fighter and they put her in the same bracket. So I'd love people to speak about me in that same way as well, 100%. Yeah, she's a great role model, isn't she, Fantastic as well? Terrific ambassador, so yes. sort of quiet and calm outside of the ring. And then when yeah. 
she gets in, it, it's like a switch, isn't it? Yeah, she's a different person. She's so quiet outside the ring and she's calm and keeps herself to so I heard the other day, apparently she doesn't even have a mobile phone. <laughs> Yeah, she gets in the ring and she's going to take your head off. And there's no two ways about it. Is she an inspiration to you or Nicola Adams or Natasha Jonas, Savannah Marshall, others that have sort of gone before? I wouldn't really say, if I'm honest, there's any women boxers that are my inspiration because I'm on my own journey. I'm taking a different path to all of them. So I wouldn't say they're my inspiration, but they're definitely people that I've watched and I have think, yeah, I'd like to do little bits like they've done, but. I'm, I'm taking a different journey to all of them. I've gone straight into the pro ranks. We've got Chantel Cameron, Terry Harper, Nina Bradley, and, and a host of amateurs as well. Sandy Ryan's doing great things. Lauren yep, Price the, as well. Uh, uh, Caroline Dubois, Ramla Ali as well. And, and it's it's fantastic to see the sort of progress and the fact that you girls are getting a great chance. Yeah, no, we're finally getting on TV and we're showing that we can we can fight. Don't if you look at boxing from. 20, 30 years ago, it wasn't a high standard and I don't blame people for not wanting to watch it because it wasn't great and you can't compare it to the way men fight but now it's much more competitive and now you see some cracking fights nowadays. You do see some cracking fights. Very good fights. And you've got a golden opportunity for something yep. that you, you've, you've sort of dedicated yourself to in the last four or five years yep. and what would you have done, what would you have become if you, if you hadn't done that? I dread to think. Seriously? I, I genuinely dread to think where I'd be right now. I couldn't tell you. And that is a sort of boxer's tale almost, yeah. isn't it? You know, you, we, we've heard, heard that over the years from so you, many. You see a lot of people that say they got into boxing for certain reasons. If it wasn't for boxing, I'd be in prison. Yeah. I'm not saying I'd be there, but I know I'd be in a very, very bad place. And yeah, that's why I wake up every day and I'm, I'm so blessed. Because I, I, I found there was a wrong path I was going down. Right. And I changed it, luckily, in the time. And yeah. I've done it at the right time and now I'm here. So you're at the Copper Box. Yep. I think you watched your first fight live there, didn't you, with yeah. Billy Joe Saunders and, and John Ryder. Did, did you get hooked there and then? Or? Well, no, I went there, I think it was 2013, <laughs> by just by chance. My friends were going that night and I was like, yeah, I'll come with you. Had you followed the sport before? No. So my uncle and my granddad are big boxing fans. OK. But uh, my mum raised me, so she was never a boxing fan. And my stepdad, he raised me since I was 12 and he wasn't a boxing fan. So it's never like it's been a big deal. But when I was a kid, my mum wanted me into ballet so much. And they used to be like, oh, she's a handful, because I used to run around like doing karate and like just, I was just so <laughs> hype all the time. A lively youngster. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then I went to the Copper Box Arena just to watch it, and it was Billy Joe Saunders versus John Ryder. I remember Derek Chazora coming out, it's like a really slow song with the, the thing around his face, and I was like, this is interesting. But I kept saying, oh, was that Billy Joe? Like, I didn't know anyone. And I kept going outside for cigarettes, and I come in, I remember sitting down and actually... The cigarettes. I know, and having a drink in between. And I sat down and I watched the fight, and I thought, do you know what, it's not just fighting, this is an art. There's, like, technical things to it, and I just, I, I enjoyed it, but I still didn't step in a gym for a couple of years, and then when I did, that's when I become obsessed. Your time at Finchley, I know. You, you live down the road from, from AJ, yep. Watford, or certainly that area. So you, you've had that sort of experience, even if you haven't had, you know, the, the, the Olympic treatment. Yes. So obviously I started off at Finchley and I'm from Watford. And obviously Watford has the AJ effect. Everyone is now a massive boxing fan because of it. And, you know, when I obviously I had to leave Finchley to go to Islington, which I was very happy about because I loved Islington, because obviously England left, uh, Finchley left England boxing. Mm -hmm. But when I would see AJ down, I'd always ask him for advice. And so that's kind of things that you can't, you can't buy that kind of, that kind of knowledge. So I, I gained a lot of experience at Finchley and I absolutely, I, I adored that place. So I was gutted to leave when I had to. And now you're following the sport and your life is taking a A little bit too obsessed with it, I think. <laughs> To the point that I'm like, I'm going to go to bed early now, and I sit there look, watching old fights and studying and studying, but it's a good way to be, I guess. That's brilliant. And Adam Booth's guiding your career, and, yep. and what's he saying to you? Is it a case of sort of step by step? And obviously, he's had the experience of David Hay and George yep. Groves and Andy Lee, now Josh Kelly. It's uh, you know, he's always been right up there, hasn't he? Involved. Yeah, so he's given me the perfect advice. Like him and Charlie are doing everything obviously right like I've gone down a weight since the amateurs and even like today I weighed myself I weigh today what I would normally weigh the day before a fight when I was an amateur so and I'm eating I've got the right nutrition in front of me now so I'm eating the right foods I'd eat more than I've ever eaten I'm doing the right training and my body feels different I punch a lot harder now and I've, my skills are a lot different and yeah like everything that they're doing 
is good. So I'm very fortunate. And what he is good at, Adam, of course, is is plotting a, a path, plotting the, the the way forward, the right yeah. fight at the right time. Have you got full trust in him to do that for you? I completely trust him with my career, whether it's the next fight or whether he says to eat this or do that. I, whether he says I do, because I genuinely trust him. Okay, so you debut in March. I mean, how many more times are we going to see you this year? Do you think? I don't, I don't know exactly. Regularly? I've got a feeling I'm going to be fighting regularly. I want to. Listen, you could give me seven fights in seven days, I'll take it. I love fighting, but I'd like to say I'll be out three or four, maybe five times for the end of the year. That's what I'd like to do. Because, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be rushed. You get people that have their pro debut and they sit on the edge of the ring afterwards and they're like, I want a title, I want this. I'm not like that. I know I haven't got that Olympic background, so I have to learn each fight, and I'm willing to. I'm not going to be calling out names, but. I'm, I'm looking forward to the journey. You, you like a chat as well. I mean, you, you're sitting in this chair for the very first time, <laughs> and uh, it, it seems like you've done many, many interviews. You've, uh, you enjoy it? Oh, I don't mind. I think it's important <laughs> to be opinionated in this sport, yeah. especially as a woman. OK, so tell me what's going to happen with you. Where, where are we going to go with you? How, how exciting is the, the journey going to be for, for, for viewers on Sky? And, and where are we going to end up? I think it's going to be an exciting journey, especially the way I fight. I think, obviously, as you can tell, I don't hold back when asked a question. And my eyes are set on being a world champion, and there's nothing else in my, my sight. I just want to be a world champion. So Saturday, March the 23rd, at the Copper Box, of course, Charlie Edwards defending his world title, Joshua Bawatsi, Lawrence Cody, <laughs> Lewis Ritson, so many on the bill. Great Can bill. you steal the show, or do you just want to get through your pro debut? No, I am stealing the show. <laughs> I, th I am. I thought you might say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a great, uh, that's a great answer and a great attitude. I tell you what, Shannon, we wish you well. And, Thank uh, you very I much. I think it's going to be a, a really uh, exciting journey to yes. watch. And uh, great to have Shannon Courtney part of the, the growing women's uh, brigade. The uh, sport is in a fantastic place, isn't it? The men and the women doing so well. That is State of the Week. Well done, Shannon. Thank you. Sky Sports. Feel it all.